Welcome to our coverage of NAB 2012. We're here with Dan from Black Magic. Hey, Dan. Now, Dan, uh, we everybody knows how cameras are. We know the traditional little pop-out LCD. We knew how the recording media, flash memory. You guys have kind of forgotten how cameras are and come up with something completely new and revolutionary, and it's getting a lot of uh, buzz here. So tell us a little bit about it. So what we wanted to do is, you know, we, we've been plugging into cameras for 10 years, and we've, we've kind of had these various technologies that have all been migrating. We've been working with solid state disks. We've been working with Thunderbolt. We've been working with compressed and uncompressed. We have Resolve. Really, it became a matter of we can really build this great acquisition tool. And we look at it as, you know, it is a camera, but it's an acquisition tool. And it's about empowering individuals with options. You know, there's a lot of great technology out there that kind of sort of forces your hand into you have to do it this way, you have to. So everything that we did when we sat down to create this product was about creating an open and flexible, but a really high technology device that is a camera. So er everything we see on here is about creating that kind of empowerment, whether it be is it going to record as Cinema DNG RAW 12-bit? Is it going to record as DNX HD? Or is it going to record as ProRes? That's their, that's their choice to do. Because it's a solid-state disk, it's got the speed to be able to do that as opposed to you know, running film or a CF card or whatnot. It's a solid-state disk. You know, it's got a high dynamic range on there. So you know, it's got 13 stops on the, on the camera. So low light, color depth, really great. It has things like Thunderbolt. I can run my Ultrascope software right off of Thunderbolt. It comes with a copy of Resolve, so I can go straight into raw grading if I want to. Uh, everything's touchscreen driven. It's a very modernized approach to looking at this acquisition tool, and that's one of the reasons why we're really excited about it, and there is a lot of buzz about it at the show. Our coverage of NAB 2012 is brought to you by Kessler, innovative tools for filmmakers. Let us direct. It's better with lettuce. LettuceDirect.com. Next lights. Get lit. When you guys decided to go with a solid state drive system instead of the traditional uh, flash media, um, that kind of opened up a lot of, uh, of ability for you because you guys are known for some of your solid state recorders um, that are very popular for other camera systems. Mm -hmm. Now, have you adopted that then technology into this new camera? That's exactly what we did. Is you know, it, it, when we started, when we started mocking this up, it was literally taking one of our HyperDeck shuttles and saying, "Look, this is taking in, and uh, you know, uncompressed frames are being fed to it." And originally, we were capturing as uncompressed, and now we were capturing as DNxHD, and then we started going down the ProRes path for our HyperDeck studios. So we were already had a great. Here's how you can record, get that high quality high data rate throughput onto these solid state disks. So that was a natural go-to for us. Now it was just about finding a great sensor. And we found this great two and a half K sensor, you know, gave us all of those other desirables that we were after. Uh, and to really kind of build this workflow oriented device and be able to present it at, you know, a price of $2,995, which is makes it, it makes it accessible to so many people to where someone that may not buy a a film type video camera but buys a still camera that does video now here's really a video camera for film like or if I'm a guy that's going out and doing a lot of shooting but I can only rent a camera once a day one day a month well, here's a camera that I can buy to use most often than not it's not about displacing the dip market it's kind of about empowering this underserved market which is really what Blackmagic does you know across the board Absolutely. Now you're talking about the sensor. What is the size of the sensor? Because that's going to be a selling point and a determining point for a lot of people. So this is the four and three quarter, four four three quarters. I always get this wrong. Four, four thirds. It's a four third inch size of the sensor, right. and obviously it's doing the two and a half K resolution for for raw. And then if you were going to ProRes or DNX HD, that'll be a 1080 output for you as well. So it's going to be a larger sensor than you know just a standard. Uh, interchangeable lens, ENG style, uh, maybe a little smaller than the Super 35 millimeter, right. uh, but then you're also offering that uh, raw output, which is not in most cameras. Not, yeah, exactly. We wanted, to, we wanted to give enough options, and we wanted to go higher than HD video resolution, but you know, it's become, it, there always becomes that point of, if you give everything, well, now you end up with a $30,000 camera, and there are many great $30,000 plus dollar cameras out there, so we had to make some choices about what we thought would apply to the most amount of people. Well, it's like the lens choice, right? We wanted to be EF and ZF compatible. We didn't necessarily want to force one thing, but we wanted something that was going to be 
you know, widely available. People have these everywhere. It's not a hard, you know, how am I going to get, uh, they have them already. So that, a lot of that same thought process throughout the whole thing. Now, 24P is obviously what everybody is going to be shooting for film stuff, but high-speed cameras are very popular. What are the, the frame rate options for this camera? This, this basic right now, we're showing 24P, but it really goes up to 30P. So it's a 24, 25, 30P camera is what we're looking at here. Our coverage of NAB 2012 is brought to you by Cinebate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. Della Luce, apparel for filmmakers. Zeiss, we make it visible. Now, this back of the camera, you know, it's almost familiar to DSLR shooters, but still I see that you've got a lot of features. It's basically menu touchscreen it's driven. It's menu driven, and it's, it, you know, as, as I was kind of playing with it the other day, and I, you know, I was like, well, Let's say I'm setting up a white, you know, one of takes. You know, instead of me going up in front, I can say, well, look, I'm going to set up the shot, but then I can go ahead and hit here, and every time I stop a shot, it's going to go ahead and go to two, to three, to four automatically. And now when I have all that metadata, it's all directly into my file. So I go into Final Cut Pro X, open it up, I want this take seven, boom, there's my clip. So it's really work workflow oriented. Then, you know, this menu, you know, this is a very familiar menu for people out there. So everything about here is a very comfortable, fast to use kind of an interface to be able to, to work with. But it gives it that sleek design of there's not 20 million buttons because you don't need it. It can be all very software driven. Now for people that are saying, you know, the back of the camera is in the best place for the monitor. Does this have outputs that you can then add additional it, monitors? Not, not for the monitors itself. So you really won't want to be using the back. But we wanted to have a design that could be used. You know, here we have them all on rails. But we also have a hand system for it. Obviously, it can be used as a point and shoot. And we felt that this design was the one that was best able to be turned into these, again, about providing choices. Is it a studio camera? Is it an in the field camera? Is it a point and shoot? This design really lends itself well to be either of those rather than, okay, well, I'm going to put monitors everywhere else. But then it really defines it. This is a studio cam. This is a shoulder mount. This is a, and this gives you lots of options there. So what kind of IOs can we expect from this model? So th this guy on it himself obviously has Thunderbolt, which is a really, really first Thunderbolt camera out there. It's got its SDI output. We use quarter inch for audio. We use this on all of our mini converters. That lets you be, be able to choose AES, EBU, or XLR audio. You're just making that choice via software. Um, it also has just a regular uh, headphone jack and then just a remote for basic easy start stop access. Now $3,000, amazing price point, very accessible. But when are we going to see this out? We're expecting to ship these in July. So it should be sometime in the summer we'll be using them. Great. Thanks for your time, man. Not a problem. Stay tuned for more coverage fresh from the floor.